All right, welcome everyone to a very special live edition of Hey Fightin' Podcast. I'm Cody Worsham, digital media reporter for LSU Athletics, as always. And today I'm joined by LSU's new offensive coordinator, Jake Peets. Coach Peets, welcome to uh, to LSU, to the show. And uh, just to, to fill in our, our listeners listening after the fact, we've got uh, right now about 40 people listening live, and I'm sure that number, number will grow, uh, and they'll be popping in and out. But Coach, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Cody. Really appreciate you having me and appreciate everybody that's taking time out of their day to uh, to join this. All right. Uh, like I said, uh, right before we got started, if you have questions for Coach Peace that you want to ask, go ahead and uh, you can pop in the chat, put your question in there, submit a question and uh, and we'll go through those. But I'll get things started. Coach, how, how's life in, in Louisiana treating you? How are you getting settled? Uh, I know it's uh, the coach's life is, is wild and you're moving around from place to place and getting settled is always uh, the, the, the first task at hand. So uh, how's it been getting settled and, and getting your feet here in, in, uh, in Baton Rouge? It's been great. Uh, we have a great you know group of people here that have really helped my wife, Maggie, and our six kids transition to Baton Rouge. Uh, people just like we love living in Charlotte, very welcoming people there. Uh, same thing here. You know, we've been exposed to some really good people. Uh, we're in the process of getting into our home now. Uh, my wife, Maggie, has been spearheading that and doing an excellent job. And uh, we're excited about laying roots down here. Speaking of uh, moving into a home, I do have a, a, a spot to read here. So I'm going to read this spot. Uh, I want to thank our friends at Assurance Mortgage for um, for helping us out and sponsoring the podcast. How long is halftime at an LSU football game? 20 minutes. How long does it take to complete a mortgage application? At Assurance Financial, you can apply for a mortgage in less time than halftime. Visit assurancemortgage.com. Proud sponsor of LSU Athletics. All right. I already see some some questions popping in the chat here. Uh, let me see if I can pull those up and we'll start there with the fans. Okay. Perfect. James Dubois, uh, Coach Pete asks to give us a view into your offensive philosophy. How will it be unique to your personal brand and what can we expect to see different? That's a great question, James. My offensive philosophy is we want to attack the defense on all fronts and we want to do it with our best players. And here at LSU, we have a really good young base of athletic talent. We have a really good offensive line uh, talent-wise that came back. Coach Craig does a great job with them. Uh, we have really good skill players on the perimeter. Mickey, uh, Joseph, and DJ do a great job coaching the receivers. And Derek Shea, our tight ends coach, is doing a great job with the guys we have at the tight end position. Kevin Falk, our running back coach, same thing with the great group of runners we have there. And, and I love our, our quarterback room. We have, you know, Miles Brennan, the most senior guy in the room. And we have some other guys, you know, TJ Finley, Max Johnson, Garrett Nussmeyer that are very young. And I still see Miles as being young as well, you know. Uh, but we have a lot of good talent. And our philosophy is going to be around what do our players do best. Each year is a unique opportunity to rebuild your brand. No games that you won the last year or that you lost the previous year carry over. This is truly like match play. Like you have a clean slate and we need to build our organization, our team from the bottom to the top. And then what talent do we have? How have they grown and adapted? So the philosophy to wrap it all up is we want to move guys around, put guys in the best position to make plays and find the ways that they execute at a high level to the best of their ability. Coach, I, I want to ask you about that quarterback room. Um, it, it, it's probably the deepest and most talented quarterback room that I can remember um, LSU having in a really long time. Uh, and I've been, I grew up here, been watching LSU football my whole life. It's just a lot of guys with a lot of talent and, and experience too, guys that have been on the, on the big stage. Um, how have you kind of worked through assessing that quarterback room, familiarizing yourself with those guys and um, kind of getting to know their different talents and abilities? Great question, Cody. And first of all, starting just getting to know these guys as young men. I mean, we have guys that have been through different things in their lives. They've been raised in different ways and been around different styles of football. And when you get a chance to have just one-on-one -on -one time with each one of them talking about uh, life, everything other than football, and you start to learn about them as a young man and then see how they learn, see how they communicate. What are their strengths? What are things, and, and we wanna to continue to build those. What are some things that we need to, to grow and build in addition to their strengths? And then getting them in the meeting rooms. We have a little bit of time right now that we're allowed to meet with them and, and we have football school going on. So we're able to introduce some things. How do they, a, absorb it, and then B, how do they, because as the quarterback, you're out there directing. How are they handling that from a communication standpoint, from an execution standpoint? And this this room, you know, I, I don't have the depth of time here like you do, 
Cody, one thing I can to compare them to past rooms, but I just know this room, we have really good young men in it. I expect a lot of them, uh, they're being challenged and they will continue to be challenged because we're trying to be elite here. And we're gonna do that by applying pressure and it allows them the opportunity to challenge their teammates as well. So I'm very pleased with the young group that we have. I think Coach Odron's done a great job here assembling good quarterbacks in this room that we'll keep adding to. And I'm excited to see these guys grow as we hit to spring ball here in a few weeks. Coach, one thing that's uh, different coming from the NFL into college, and you've worked in college before, is, is obviously adding recruiting uh, to the plate. Justin Broussard asked in the chat, Coach Pete, how has it been adjusting to recruiting? How are you sort of uh, getting back into that swing of things after being in the NFL for a little bit? I never left. Honestly, I don't know what recruiting means. To me, it's relationships. And relationships are a big part of everything we do. Like everybody on this chat, and again, I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to be here. Every one of you has your occupation, your profession that you do. And communication and relationships are critical to everything I can think of. So it really hasn't changed. Like a few of the guys that like Christian McCaffrey and I talk multiple times during the week and uh, Derek Carr and I talk very often. Like these are guys I've coached and that I love. Like we have very, you know, close relationships outside of football and different guys that, that we've had relationships with and worked with in the past. And it's no different. Like when I'm talking to a guy who's a, a, perfect, or a prospective student athlete, it's just building the relationship with them, with their families. It's no different. Like I honestly see zero difference. And when you have great people like Coach Odron at the top help directing it, like we, and we have such great coaches here that do a great job building relationships, it really makes it a lot easier because when you're talking to a high school coach, or you're talking to especially the kids in the state of Louisiana, which the state of Louisiana has so much talent in it. And that's a testament to A, the parents raising these kids, and B, the coaches in the high school level, the youth level, to the talent that they have, that they're coaching these kids that are, that are great players. And Coach Odron and what they've built here in the past makes these relationships easy to build because they know that the man at the top, Coach O, cares deeply about these young men, not just as football players, but as men. And when we focus on that first, then we can really get into the football. Speaking of parents, we have a question from Courtney Dunbar, who uh, identifies herself as a, a Nebraska mom. So you, you, you know right. Nebraska well. I'm going to try to um, get Courtney on here. I'm going to allow her to talk. And Courtney, if you want to, you can, uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask Coach your question. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. I can't even, I mean, yeah, I know where you grew up and, and we're so excited to have a Nebraska and an LSU. Um, right, so, thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, very excited. I know because I grew up in the state as well, Nebraska yeah. football legacy and how proud we are because we always really valued character in these teams. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Osborne always valued character and they, they cared a lot about the players, just like you were talking about here. I'm curious about what you carried from what you learned by being a part of that institution in college into how you coach now. Do you recognize this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. That's so awesome. Hey, so and I'll tell you, Courtney, first of all, where are you from? Are you from there? I'm from Nebraska City. I've lived in Omaha for years. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I have uh, my sister in Omaha, great friends in Omaha and, and family there. But yeah, what have I carried? I'll tell you what, I, I grew up uh, outside of a small farming town, O'Neill, Nebraska, and I'm very, very proud of that. And the people there and my parents to my high school coach, Daryl Schneider, my high school uh, football coach is coach Daryl Schneider. He's still coaching there. And my high school basketball coach, Mike Pardon, are a couple of guys that uh, greatly impacted me. And, and I know I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for them. Like they're two of the people that impacted me at the very beginning. And when you're from a, a farming, ranching town like that, uh, you learn to figure things out and you learn to progress, challenge each other. You understand that things are not going to be easy. And, and it certainly hasn't been easy. You can talk to my wife who's handling moving and, and getting into a new house, handling six kids while I'm here in the office. Uh, nothing's easy, but, but we really enjoy it. We love the challenge and something coming from there. Like, I feel like it's been so easy to be the last few places I've been and even before that, but just focused on like in Charlotte with the Panthers, you have so many great people there uh, in that organization and in that city and coming to Baton Rouge, just so many great people here, very hospitable people that are very passionate about 
uh, their brand about LSU football, no different than the University of Nebraska. And what you expect, I'm sure, from the university and what product that that um, really had been putting out in the past. Uh, you know, that's something that, uh, uh, that, we, that we aspire to uh, continue what has been done here, you know, in recent history is keep this thing going. And I think when you focus on taking the high ground, like Coach Osborne's book says, and you know, it's a lot of fun for me, Mickey Joseph, our receivers coach, do you remember watching him oh, play? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. The only time that I remember my mom's mom, uh, my grandma Ziegler, who lives in North Platte, Nebraska, um, my, and I feel awful, but I can't remember. She's like 94 years old now. But my grandma, the one time that I visibly remember her and my grandfather being very upset was when we were watching Nebraska play on TV at Oklahoma. I was probably six or seven years old and Mickey got hit laid out of bounds. Yeah. And do you remember that? No, I don't. But I know all about that rivalry. I yeah, know. I mean, great yeah. rivalry. But yes. Mickey ended up being out for the game and I had never seen and I was too young to really understand. But my, my grandmother got her blood pressure up pretty high with that. But and it's great getting to work with him because I remember watching him play when I was young. But oh, yeah. but the thing is, is when it's about the kids and it's about the character, it's about integrity, everything else is going to fall in line. But when we get those things done and we have very firm ground, it allows you to challenge the kids at a different level. Like even Christian McCaffrey, that kid is such an elite talent and an elite human being. Him and I had times where we butted heads with each other. We challenged each other. We knew that we both loved each other. So we were able to challenge each other with great respect. And if you have developed that, and that's no different than what you do in your profession or anybody else listening, when you really build that with a firm foundation of trust, then you can have a relationship and then you can challenge each other. You can work to be better. And I think that's what our staff does here. We had a great meetings this morning. We got a lot done today. Uh, we got in here early. We've been knocking things out and, and there are some things we challenge each other on and we need to, because when we do that, we're not just doing it because you know, because it was done in the past or because, you know, this is what one person wants to do. We're doing it because it's what's best for us in the here and right now. Yeah, it's ideal. And I'll tell you just, uh, and I know you know this because you uh, college world series in the summer, we always liked when LSU makes that yeah. as well, because Nebraskans view the same character out of that fan base that they view out of the rounds. So it's a huge compliment. Second year uh, season ticket holder, you're going to see us coming out of Nebraska all fall. So we're very excited for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank and you, Courtney. I, I have great memories yes. of that College World Series. And I remember as a kid watching Warren Morris hit that home run. And I, I was, I can't remember. I feel like, did they beat Miami in another one? Uh, th that, that was against my, I don't think Miami was in another final. I don't think okay. so. Okay. The Warren Morris was against Miami. Yeah. Okay. Because yep. there was another one and I was young, but I'm pretty sure they won another one up there. And I was actually at that game. But uh, they, anyway. they won a bunch. <laughs> yeah, they won a bunch. I've always had great respect. And, you know, uh, Jack Marucci, I'll show you this here. He actually, we were talking about technology with the quarterbacks. I, I got to take some cuts with one of his bats in the cage there at his uh, facility. I'm a huge baseball fan. Yeah, no, no, no better bats yeah. in the world than uh, the Marucci bats. Caleb, yeah. uh, Caleb Payton had a question for you, coach. Caleb, if you can unmute yourself and, and, uh, and fire away. Yeah, sure thing. How's it going, coach? Great, Caleb. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. So um, this is something I think we've seen as a uh, recurring theme as a fan base for many years now. Whenever we get inside the 10, uh, we tend to go into a nice little jumbo package. And I was just curious, what's your personal strategy for you know, those goal-to-go situations? What, what have you done in the past and what are things that we could see going forward? Caleb, it tells me you're in Tuscaloosa, Alabama asking that question. Is that accurate? No, not accurate at all. <laughs> oh, I just didn't. <laughs> Um, what okay. we want to do is we, when we get in the red zone, uh, well, the critical element of each drive, Caleb is, or excuse me, Gabe, is we want to uh, end with points, right? We want to end with points. Now we'd like to get touchdowns every time, but when we get inside the 10, what we want to do is find our matchups and that can manifest itself in many ways, shapes or form. But we have really good players on this offense and we want to do it, whether it's formationally, maybe we have a play that we feel like just uh, is very difficult for whatever lead coverages they have down there to handle. Uh, sometimes you want to tighten it in and you want to get in like what you're talking about jumbo. Maybe you bring a couple extra offensive linemen in there because you just want to physically be dominant down there and move them off the ball and just walk the ball into the end zone. There are also times where it's going to be good to spread them out and make them play the whole width of the field and the thing about in the red zone, everything happens quicker. 
because like you said, you're inside the 10 yard line. The end zone is 10 yards deep. So when you're to the field, you have all that grass that they've got to protect behind them. Now they've got themselves against a wall. So the force player, be it the guy that turns the play back or the guy that's setting the edge, those things show up quicker. And they're going to try and make the ball come out faster. They can guard zones easier. So how do we do it? We like to spread them out at times. We want to pull a defender here to throw behind him here. Different ways. You got to be able to run the ball down there. But like I said, those force players are going to hit a little faster. So trying to find ways that you can make quick hitting runs down there or be able to create grab high low situations that you can put defenders in a conflict where they've got, they're supposed to grab a guy here, but now you're bringing a guy behind them are ways that we can attack various red zone coverages. But that, that's a great uh, question. It's hard to score down there. That's why it's a, uh, you know, sometimes it may be easier to actually get there, but then when they have less room to defend, sometimes those guys, they make it hard for you to get in, but that's a very big thing that we're studying. Everybody in college and NFL football is studying that right now. And trust me, we're going to have a good plan of attack. And the main thing though, we want to come out of every single series that we get in there with points. We don't want to have any no scores and that's by a turnover. That's by a missed field goal. And we want to have a very high touchdown percentage because when you do score touchdowns in the red area, you win games. Yeah. And you got a pretty good field goal kicker too. So just uh, in, in case you do have to settle for three, you got a guy that, that's pretty good at, at kicking them. So yeah, hopefully good. he's kicking a lot of extra points. Yeah. We'd rather him kicking for one than three for sure. Uh, Caleb, thanks for the question, by the way, just for, for everyone listening, I, once you ask your question, I'll just go ahead and, and remove you just so we can, um, keep things moving. A um, couple questions in here um, about Joe Brady and and, and um, your relationship with him, and obviously mm -hmm. coming from Carolina. Uh, I think I, I saw in in your press conference you talked about how he uh, you spent more time with him last year than than anybody else. Um, yeah. Nicholas Boudreau asked about will, will your terminology um, be similar to what, when Joe Brady was here, and then there was another question down here from Jonathan Efferson: Will this be a similar offense as when Coach Brady was here, or will there be some nuances? that you install. So I'm sure you, I mean, you've been asked that question a million times, I'm sure, but just sure. Um, obviously there's, there's a strong influence and relationship there, but how, how, what are going to be the similarities and differences offensively? Yeah. I think what Joe did a great job here doing is creating matchups and he did a great job understanding what the defense was doing and trying to find ways to manipulate that. And that's where him and I, I felt like we were able to work so well together because we've been trained from different people, but very similarly. And this offense that he brought here this past game, which I love, it's elite. And I learned it working with Sean McVay uh, in Washington. Sean Payton was John Gruden's uh, quarterback coach with the Eagles. And so there's a lot of those influences there that Sean had. And it really helped me getting with Joe last year because I felt like it took me to a different level in that offense. And that's what was so fun working with him. Like we talked about challenging each other. He's a guy that's dynamic with his ideas. He's a guy that communicates very clearly. Uh, I think he did a really good job at making it simple. And, and that's a big reason that it was important for me. I know you're going to visit with him next, but was having DJ Mangus here because DJ, you know, spent that year with Joe and they put that together here. And then we adapted it in Carolina just like they're adapting it again, year two in Carolina, and we're taking our thoughts and adapting it here back at LSU. So uh, I think when you have more time on task with an offense, like, so I learned similar parts of it from McVay. And then I learned, I felt like it even, you know, a higher level just because it's more time on task with Joe. And then here we have different players than they had in 19, but how can we put them in the best situations just like they did in 19? And from a nomenclature standpoint, that's always, you know, the terminology, that's always a fun thing that you revisit every year because you try to make it very simple for your team. And it's a little different. Like we changed nomenclature in ways in Carolina from what it was called here at LSU. And there are some ways coming back to it now that we're really stripping it down to the studs and trying to put everything together here that we can adjust some nomenclature, the way that we're handling some things from whether it's a communication signal standpoint, that'll be different uh, because we want to streamline it and continue to grow and make it better. And talking to Joe, who um, I, I talked to Joe once a week. I mean, he's one of my close friends, so we don't always just talk about football and what goes on here, but uh, it's interesting. Some of the things that I bring up to him, I'm like, Hey, yeah, we're going to do this here. We talked about doing this. And he's like, yeah, I would have done that if I was there another year, you know? So we have a lot of similar thoughts on it and it's been fun to continue, not just, you know, in football, but, 
like, again, I consider Joe one of my very close friends. So building that relationship on that front as well. Coach Beats, I have one for you. Um, when, when you were hired, there were a couple of profiles written about you that um, were the most thorough profiles I've ever read in my life, probably. Uh, and one of them mentioned that you used to train NBA basketball players and then you work mm-hmm. with, the, uh, with the with the Pacers. So yeah. you can just kind of tell the story there. I'm, I'm a basketball guy, so just curious um, from that, that aspect. But um, the story there and then maybe just some things that you learned in, in that world that apply over to this world. Yeah, that was a great experience. I'd actually did an internship at a place called Athletes Performance, ran by Mark Verstegen. That's now Exos. They train a lot of uh, combine guy or uh, college players getting ready for the combine or different professional athletes. And I'd gotten around Al Harrington, who uh, was was a great player in the NBA at that time. Al's done now, but uh, then the Indiana Pacers had a position open and. Al brought up my name, uh, got me in contact with their head strength coach, and and they said, come on out. So that's when I was at Santa Barbara City College, actually. And I uh, moved to Indianapolis, spent that season with them, and, and it was a great experience. I got around guys that, uh, you know, just like when I went, I grew up in a farming town in O'Neill, Nebraska. I got around guys at the University of Nebraska that were raised a lot different than me, some similar, and then different places I'd been, some are different, some are similar. And the NBA was great for me because I was around, you know, I wasn't around a single guy from Nebraska, I can tell you that. But but it was a lot of fun getting a chance to be with elite athletes in a sport that I also loved. I love playing basketball and being around that. And then getting around some of the great people there like being around Larry Bird every day was pretty special. And just being able to try and be a sponge from everybody. Rick Carlisle was the head coach at that point. Uh, Great, great head coach. And I've learned a lot of lessons that I've employed since then from guys outside of football, you know, and guys that are still there with the Indiana Pacers. Dan Burke is still an assistant that is there. And uh, one of my close friends is uh, Mike Brown, who is, uh, He's the number two coach. Uh, he's been a head coach multiple places mm-hmm. in the NBA, but he's with the Golden State Warriors. And Mike is a guy that uh, that I call a lot on different things and get his opinion. Uh, just so many relationships were built from that that have really helped me. Uh, Jermaine O'Neal was probably our most featured player at that point and getting around him and uh, you know, still some of those guys that I stay in touch with really have helped me relate to guys and also gave me at an early age, I believe I was 22 at that point, uh, a different vision and viewpoint into life in general. Yeah. One of my favorite qu- uh, quotes is all art is theft. That's I, I apply that to, uh, to all the writing and, and content creation I do. And I think coaches do a good job of that too, just borrowing things from, from uh, all their different influences. Uh, and it sounds like you certainly have, have pulled from there. Yeah. It's, it's a special opportunity. Every day is an opportunity. Every interaction is an opportunity. And like somebody actually hit me with this i'll just put and i don't have a lot of books in my office just ones i've read but like this quote got brought up leadership this uh cheryl bachelor like dare to serve Mm -hmm. you know it's about you know just how much to be a leader you need to be humble Mm -hmm. and and it is a sport of humility and uh cheryl somebody actually i heard because she actually screenshotted it to me she appreciated the shout out but uh uh, I sat next to her on an airplane and it was very interesting. I was coming back from the combine and we were just sitting next to each other talking. And then she said, what do you do? And I said, well, I work in football. And I said, what do you do? And she ran the company that owned Popeyes and all these other things. I mean, she was a big time CEO. She's retired now, but uh, it was very interesting to hear some of her viewpoints on leadership, because I think when you become a coordinator, you you're in charge of leading that group of men on the offensive side and that staff. And there are so many things that I learned just from the interactions with her. And she actually sent me her book and, and it was cool to learn some of those things, read those things, and then talk to her about them and trying to understand what brought her thoughts to put those words to paper. And uh, when you do understand that when you're in a leadership position, it truly is a sport where humility is rewarded and you need to be able to work together with your peers and also work to impact them in a very positive way for themselves. So trying to enact some positive change for them, which will enact positive change for you collectively. See, see coach, now I'm gonna have to get you on my other podcast, which is Tigers win, which is all about leadership and victory and success and all that sort of stuff. So you, you've kind of delved into some topics there. So maybe when we finish this, we'll, uh, we'll set that up and that was a, a very nice little natural plug on this podcast for that one. Sure. Um, 
couple couple quick hitters here. Um, Andres Valencia said favorite Louisiana food so far. I'll tell you what, our dining hall that we have on the first floor, because I really haven't elite. been able to eat much right there. We that's elite. What our dining staff does, uh, I really have enjoyed eating that. Uh, shoot, what else have we had? Gino's. Gino's is really good. I've enjoyed that. Uh, my wife is Lebanese, and so is Gino's wife. So that's been great. There you go. Uh, and then uh, what is it? Coffee Hill. I'm Coffee sure Hill. Coffee Hill. I hadn't heard of it. Yeah, Where is it's, it? uh, it's uh, not far off, off of College Street and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Uh, coffee Call. Coffee Call. Sorry, coffee thanks. Call coffee Beignets. Call. Absolutely. Yeah, there Coffee you go. Call Beignets. Yeah, yeah, I cannot wait to uh, get get a hold of some of those hopefully <laughs> this weekend. But yeah, Coffee Call, that place, uh, I've driven through there a couple of times and been very impressed. My most controversial food take is that Coffee Call is better than Cafe Du Monde in New Orleans. I get a lot of flack for uh, for, for saying that when I say that, but I, I, I hold to that. Um, Clark Castle asks, how's the development going for some of the young wide receivers? I, I know you all haven't really done a whole lot on the field yet, with, but, but with football school and the things that you've seen. Yeah, I really like the young wide receivers. I think that Mickey and DJ have done a great job with them. Uh, you know, we have you know, great analysts there in Carter Sheridan and Parker Ogeron that help uh, do all the, some of the preparation work for DJ and Mickey. And I think collectively they've all done a great job. We have a good young group uh, that I'm really excited about. And we've got a couple of guys that'll be here, you know, come the uh, uh, what summer or fall, whenever they're allowed to be in here that I'm excited about. But the thing with this receiver group, and I think it really speaks to the offensive players as a whole these guys are competitive and this matters to them. Like the way they work to train uh, their workouts, the things that they're doing right now, like these guys are really focused on uh, putting forth the effort, which that's the critical element. Like when we have great effort with the talent we have, we can put together a special product. I think I got time for one or two more at the most. Uh, Caleb Dufresne, another Caleb asked, with the entire offensive line coming back, continuity should be there. Do you think you will be able to have more empty sets? That was a huge thing when, when Joe was here um, mm -hmm. going to going to empty. And so, um, Caleb, yeah, Caleb asking about empty sets. Yeah, I think that's a great question. And the offensive line coming back is big. Like that, they're a great group and they busted their tail. Like I said, James, James Craig, Mark Hudson have done a great job with those guys. Uh, I think the empty sets, again, it goes to what do you feel like stresses the defense and puts your playmakers in the best position to make plays. And I think that's something that Joe did an elite job with in 19. And they had a great cast out there. And, and Joe Burrow obviously playing at an elite level. Um, and I should have brought this up for uh, Courtney. You know, Joe, uh, her being from Nebraska, you know, Joe, his brother, and I, one of his brothers and I played together, Dan and I were teammates, and his older brother was before us. But... Uh, when you have those guys, it created great advantages to them. And, and we'll see. Uh, it'll be fun to see in, uh, in the Rose Bowl. You'll get a chance to see if we feel like it's a great advantage for us. All right, last one for you, Coach. This one's for me. Um, six kids under seven, is that right? Did, did I get the math right? right. Um, I got two under, under five, as you can tell from the bags yeah. under my eyes. <laughs> uh, I've, I've got them alone this week, and I haven't slept in days. Yeah. Um, what, what, what kid movie are you rocking with? Like, what's the go-to kid movie that you, you pop on? Because you've got three of each, so you've got a you probably yeah, got a three boys, three there. girls. Well, my, my wife and I, we're Catholic. Um, our family's Catholic, so during Lent, we give up uh, TV. So uh, mm. we have uh, an app, though, that we're like, well, we do religious shows. So it's, there's an app, a Catholic app called Form that has really good like okay. movies. So you can watch a movie about, you know, St. John Bosco and it's actually really good. It's some of them are documentaries. Hmm. Some of them are actually, you know, been released in theaters. So uh, my, my kids love the, uh, the St. movies. And, and again, it just, it gives us more time like right now to just be intentional. We don't have a sure. lot of time together right now. Uh, so especially like right now would be an NFL off season, which is very friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. Coach Odron gives us an unbelievable schedule here. Like this is the best in the business as far as we get in and get our work done and get out and have family time. But uh, that it allows us to be more intentional. And we like being outside. We like doing things. We have great weather now. We got through that storm. And I hope everybody listening is doing well now. But uh, that that's what we're watching at Pete's house right now. Awesome. Coach, appreciate your time. Uh, everyone that, that joined, thank you for joining as well. Uh, we got Coach Mangus coming up in 15 minutes. So you can, I think you can stick around for that. I don't know the exact format. But Coach Beats, appreciate you uh, giving us some time and, and, and sharing some insights. You bet. Thank you very much for having me, Cody. And appreciate everybody listening. Go Tigers.